Hello everybody, and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conniger, and I'm building this, the Kit Fox Series 7 STI. Still have a problem with that tire. It's in the works. Today's video is going to be a continuation of the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little bell for notifications so you don't miss out on future build videos, if it's your thing. If it's not and you're just here to watch, well, thanks for coming to the channel, and I uh, hope you enjoy a little bit of what you're seeing. Let's get into the video. This is one of my happy moments when I get to take some tags off. Vertical tail, speedster tail, and the rudder rib, speedster tail. I get to take those tags off and add them to my little bag of tags for all the parts that I've put together. I've kind of kept all those as just a little reminder that I've actually put a few things together on the plane. So I'm just going to put the pages back in since I went over what I needed to yesterday. Got yesterday I put the ribs in, sanded and fitted the ribs into the horizontal stabilizer and the rudder. Uh, that went smoother than I thought, I think, smoother than it did on the Sorry, the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. If I said horizontal stabilizer, I meant the vertical. Again, that was my that was my first experience working on that. So, so I'm getting a little more, uh, I would say, proficient in this regard. I'm turning the page. The airfoil ribs for the vertical stabilizer come shaped to fit. Only slight trimming, if any, should be necessary. So one of the part numbers requires a slot cut into it to clear the diagonal support tube in the stabilizer. I did that yesterday. Cut the slot to the same diameter as the tube when the rib is well fit, prep, and bonded in place. Uh, I've got to do a little bit of, I'm going to read ahead a little bit because I have a pretty close, the tolerances between, uh, between the forward edge of the rudder and the aft edge of the vertical stabilizer, I would say are within a quarter of an inch. I'll put that up on the screen here in a second. Um, so I want to make sure that these fairings fit in there. So I should probably fit them in if I can and see and then check the book here and see what it says my tolerances are because the the ribs on the rudder so all the fronts seem to be in alignment and same with the ribs on the vertical stabilizer all the backs were machined out nicely so I just sanded the front end of those where they meet the slanted tube coming down on the fuselage so it looks like everything's lined up well. Again, I'm going to check the tolerances and then we'll see, do I need to sand anything down? Do I need to adjust anything? I do know that there's three points of contact between the vertical stabilizer and the rudder. And they have eye bolts in there that are adjustable. So you can move that spacing. I think you can make that spacing greater or smaller. Um, when you're putting that together, I do remember you just, I think it said bottom them out, set them in there get them lined up, make sure your spacing is equal between the forward edge of the rudder and the aft edge and the trailing edge of the vertical stabilizer and then and then drive on. So I did that. Um, so we'll, we'll check our tolerances and see where, see where we're at on that. This is where I left off, which we haven't covered yet. All right, let's do this step next. Page 100, Appendix B, optional air-foiled vertical tail assembly. Fairing installation. So set the stabilizer trailing edge fairing in place and adjust its position vertically on the aircraft until the width of the fairing matches the width of the rib trailing edges. More than likely, I'm going to have to take off the rudder to do that. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Yes. If necessary, sand the ribs to fit the fairing. Ensure that the ribs maintain a smooth, fared in profile after any narrowing of the end of the rib. When the fairing is properly located, mark the top and bottom for trimming and remove the fairing and trim it to length as necessary. And then prep and bond the fairing in place. So prep and bond, looks like 
some cutting, some filing, some sanding, and probably some high sol epoxy, more than likely. How the hell yeah! Create a tip for the vertical stabilizer by shaping the foam block up here material to a contour that is cosmetically pleasing to the eye. When ready, prepare and bond the foam to the tube and rib. After the adhesive cures, mix another small amount of adhesive and brush it over the surface of the foam for sealing. Now, I'm going to show you that what I did on the horizontal stabilizer, and I don't really like it. It probably adds a little bit of structure to that foam because that foam is super soft, so in case something hits that, like a, a bird or your garage door or who knows what, it doesn't ding as easily. So I have a question for you guys in the comments. Anybody who's already done this step or built, I want to take you over and show you the horizontal stabilizer and get, get your opinion on something. So let's go on over here. Okay, hopefully you can see this good. I've done a little bit of sanding on here, but this is a, these are the foam blocks that I did on the, on the horizontal stabilizer and down here on the, on the elevator. So I can bring that up so everything's in line for the most part anyway um so yeah i put the i put the high saw over the top of that and it did give it some rigidity which is good i do know that other guys have used bondo to cover that up so as we come around over here this framing member does stick past just a little bit so i'm assuming i'll need to leave that that way if i put some bondo on here or whatever that uh, super fill is, I guess, smooth that over and sand it down. It sounds like it's easier to work with. Um, do I need to leave metal available here for for fabric to to stick to, or would it be all right if it sticks to that super fill? Anybody knows that answer to that question? Please let me know in the comments down below. Um, but sanding this stuff doesn't really smooth it out very quickly. I imagine I probably have to. And you, you definitely want to be careful. I got to take some off the actual framing member right there, and I'm probably going to have to chip it off with a screwdriver or some some tool because I don't want to sand down through the paint and into the into the metal, and I don't want to go through the paint at all. So I'm going to have to scratch that off a little bit. Anyway, I'm going to be doing that back here. I'm going to pull the rudder off and probably have to release my rudder cables, which I have lightly clamped down here on the rudder. So I'll just clamp them up there someplace. For the time being, take the rudder off and see if we can put this fairing on. So let's do that. All right, we'll release these rudder cables. Check to see what size these bolts are. Nuts, bolts. Looks like the old uh, 3 8 How neat is that? That's pretty neat. Both of them, top and bottom. And I'm gonna leave the eyelets in there because I know if you take those out, you gotta count the number of turns, etc., etc. And and I don't think things are calibrated right now. So anyway, I'd rather, well, there's three, sorry. One, two, three. So either way, eyelets or nuts and bolts, and these are probably just hand tight. Yep. So. So I can do those without wrenches. Let's get these clamps off of here. Since all of our high saws dried up, cured, stabilized, etc. Everything is glued in place where it needs to be. Those are all off of there for the rudder. A little OCD, so I'm gonna keep the red ones separated from the yellow ones. Don't want to mix and match the colors on the clamps, that is. Do the same for the vertical stabilizer. Get those off of there. Actually, I'll set a few down here because I still have to epoxy those three pieces in down here. That'll give me a little reminder that they need to be attached yet. Okay, I got the middle bolt out. I've got all the nuts and washers off, all three of them. I'm gonna take out the bottom one now because it'll be easier to keep that from pivoting. She doesn't really want to move anyway. So we'll take this top one out. Just should just pop right out like a fine oiled machine, but it does not. 
so. There we go. A wee bit of wiggling. Coax it out. Come on, screw. You know you want to come out of there. Yep, all right. Now it should just pull right off. Excellent. All right, be careful not to hit that on anything. And I might as well just put these nuts, bolts, nuts, and washers right back in their respective location as to not misplace any of them. I'm a washer short. Oh, there it is. Right in the pocket. All right, let's grab the fairing and test fit it. All right, guys, I found one video from a gentleman named Swift Fox. I believe he's Scottish, perhaps, or British. I'm not sure completely. I'll find that out. Anyway, he does a time lapse of his fairing, and you see him putting it on, but not the details. Now, this channel down here measures about an inch deep over to the edge there and it's consistent all the way down it's right at about an inch so then i'll bring you over here looking at these items from i'll use this one because it's closer so these detents here you can see in the in the rib which is where the the fairing is going to lay into that. So measuring from here, this front of the detent, to about the back of the edge, you can see that it's well, right about there. It's about an inch. And it stays that way down here at the bottom as well. You can see this detent, I'm gonna measure I mean, the edge of this is pretty cool. That's about, it's about the inch mark, so it would stick out just a smidge. So I think what I'm going to have to do is notch out to this, slide that fairing over until it butts up to this bolt, and it stays consistent all the way up top. Touches here, and touches here. And Mr. Swift Fox stopped his up here didn't come up to the top. So I guess it's a horse piece. I definitely want it to overlap this a little bit. Maybe it doesn't have to come up to the very top, but the instructions leave plenty to the imagination. So I'm gonna, I, th I still think I'm gonna take mine up to the top because I can always cut some off later. I can't add any on. So that's my thought process thus far. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. I hope you like what you saw and maybe you learned something along the way or you just enjoyed stopping back to the channel and seeing what I'm doing on the airplane. But I appreciate you guys and I appreciate all the likes, the comments, and the subscriptions um, if you're a subscriber. If not, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, the little bell for future notifications so you don't miss out on videos like this when they come out. And we'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.